There's so many videos about removing tonsil stones, but I haven't seen any video on how to correct the deeper underlying cause of a tonsil stone because a tonsil stone is really a symptom of something else. And I totally understand that tonsil stones can be pretty bad because they give you chronic halitosis, like really bad breath. Apparently the microbes that are involved produce what's called volatile sulfur compounds. And this is like a sulfur gas, kind of like rotten eggs, which is also involved in the smell of like a swamp or a sewage. And these microbes are making this gas in the back of your throat. So it can be pretty devastating. And the gas is called hydrogen sulfide. And so what you have is you have these microbes in these little tiny indentations in the back of your tonsils that are basically creating pus and mucus. And eventually it turns into this calcium little stone. So let's first just kind of cover what is a tonsil. Well, you actually have four different sets of tonsils. You have tonsils a little bit higher up in the back of the nasal area, which you can't really see. And then you have the one that you can see called the palatine tonsils. And the word palatine is from the palatine bone because it's the posterior part or the back part of your throat. So basically what a tonsil it is, it's a, it's kind of like a lymphatic tissue that acts as the first line of defense against pathogens. So the tonsils are there to pick up information from these pathogens and send it to the rest of the immune system. It's kind of like, uh, okay, body, we have the pathogens in the house. We have to do something about it. Start turning up the immune system. So they're kind of like the guard at the front door to protect against uh, pathogens going into the lung as well as in the digestive system. And a lot of times people have their tonsils removed, right? Problem over. Well, when you remove the first line of defense, there could be some complications, possibly, not always, but they have found uh, increased risk of lower respiratory tract infections, infections of the lung, increased risk of Hodgkin's lymphoma, and also an enhancement in susceptibility to developing certain types of autoimmune conditions, probably because most of the autoimmune conditions originate in the gut. And so then it invades, it bypasses immigration. Now, as far as the pathogens that this tonsil is exposed to, they've calculated that if you look at the difference between viruses and bacteria, the viruses are roughly about between 50 and 80% okay, of tonsil infections. And the bacteria is only between 5 and 17%. And also remember that antibiotics only work on bacterial infections. So if you're automatically taking an antibiotic, it's going to be hit or miss because if it's a viral thing, it's not going to do anything. The Epstein-Barr virus is notoriously known to infect the tonsils. But here's the big picture of the tonsils. You need to be able to stimulate and train your immune system to become stronger. And so we're born with an innate immune system from our mother, but we develop what's called the acquired immune system through training, being exposed to certain pathogens. So when they do studies on mice that are germ-free and don't have this training system, you know, it's just they don't develop certain parts of the immune system later in life, and that can weaken the immune system. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because sometimes when you have kids and they have swollen tonsils, you might immediately start giving them some type of anti-inflammatory, ibuprofen or something to get rid of the inflammation or the symptom, when in fact, uh, it may be a good idea just to let them go through the infection to develop this acquired immunity. This is interesting, uh, and I'm going to put the research down below in the description. I found something fascinating in relationship to vitamin D deficiencies. There's a significant association between low vitamin D and an inflamed tonsil, as in tonsillitis. I did find uh, another study that showed a zinc deficiency can also create an inflamed tonsil, as well as an iron deficiency. And we do know that zinc and vitamin D and also iron influence the immune system. And vitamin D is like seriously powerful in helping create antimicrobial effects within your immune system. I found another interesting paper and one very specific thing about that paper that's kind of stood out. One of the risk factors of having tonsil problems is lack of sun exposure. Ding, 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 vitamin D. There's more incidence of inflamed tonsils during the winter versus the summer. Here's the problem. It's very difficult to get enough vitamin D from our diet. And many times 
if you're thinking about kids and tonsil problems and large tonsil issues, first of all, they don't uh, get out in the sun as much. And many times they don't consume salmon, cod liver oil, things like that. And if they're drinking soda with high phosphates, that alone can deplete the vitamin D. The underlying predisposing factor really is vitamin D and probably throw some zinc in there too. And if you have small children, you can even get the liquid vitamin D as well. Now, another point I want to bring up when I was in practice, I would have kids come in all the time with these huge tonsils and that affects the breathing and creates snoring. And back then, I didn't really know about vitamin D, but what I did do, which was successful, is get them off milk because many times they had a milk allergy and they didn't know it. And it could just automatically create enlargement or inflammation of your tonsils. Now, as far as the amount of vitamin D, as far as a maintenance dose, I would recommend 10,000 IUs. If you're trying to therapeutically correct something, I would increase it to 20, maybe 30,000 IUs, but also make sure you take uh, vitamin K2, especially since um, calcium is involved. And one of the points about calcium is vitamin K2 removes the calcium from the soft tissues, not just the arteries and the joints. So for every 10,000 I use of vitamin D3, you want 100 micrograms of vitamin K2. That would be a good ratio. Now, since we're on the topic of tonsils, I have another video on this, which has been very popular. If you haven't seen this one, check it out. I put it up right here. 